Hey guys, David Fine here from Keys Mods. Today, we are going to go over one of my favorite South Florida mods. It's the Rustic Sphinx, and I've got one right here. Big, big Sphinx moth. We're gonna tell you all about it. Uh, guys, this channel is dedicated to the furthering of the knowledge of the moths and butterflies of South Florida, and especially in the Florida Keys, and we've got 600 mods that we cover. 600 mods, and I think there's more. So. Check out the channel. We're gonna go through tons and tons of different moths and butterflies from South Florida and the Florida Keys and bring you along some adventures whenever we travel. We always take video of butterflies and moths and we share those adventures with you. So uh, guys, let's get to the video on one of my favorite South Florida moths, the Rustic Sphinx. All right, Manduca Rustica is one of the coolest bugs. Look at the pattern on the wings of the rustic sphinx. Now there's some serious camouflage opportunity here, but this this is a this is a wicked looking moth. I I, I absolutely love the rustic sphinx. And uh, this box, guys, is a box of my large uh, manduca genus manduca species from the Florida Keys, and then we've got Agrius cingulata, the pink spotted hawk moth down here as well. It's similar enough where I threw it in this box, but. You guys, we have three species of Manduca in the Florida Keys. We have the Rustic Sphinx, which is not very common there. We've got the Tomato Hornworm, or the Five-Spotted Hawk Moth. Manduca Quinquamaculata, yeah. Say that one a few times fast. Quinquamaculata. Uh, I've only seen one specimen of this in the Florida Keys. And then the uh, the Tobacco Hornworm. The, this is Manduca Sexta, and Sexta, Six spotted hawk moth. That's the Latin name for that. And these are the three species of moths in the Manduca genus that exists in the Florida Keys. But today we're gonna to highlight the rustic sphinx, Manduca rustica. And you obviously can tell why it was named that. It has this rusty brown coloration with this really cool modeling uh, color. And what I'll do is I'll just kind of separate this guy out, or this girl, that's a female and kind of give you an up close. You can't, conf you're not gonna really confuse this bug with any of the other species because of this really amazing, striking uh, coloration here on the forewing. So not confusable with any other species in its range. This is actually a tropical species. It lives in Central and South America and throughout the Caribbean, but strays up into you know, pretty much all of the southeastern United States. And the furthest north I've found this bug is in South Carolina on a gas station wall. Here's a video of it flying. I got a video of this thing flying in slow motion. Check this out. Uh, another cool thing about the rustic sphinx is look at the size of, oops, look at the size of the proboscis. I mounted this one with the proboscis extended out and look at the size of the proboscis. That thing can go way down into the throat of a deep throated flower and retrieve the nectar that it's so desired. So that is a pretty cool thing uh, that, <laughs> that a lot of people have heard that Sphinx moths have this long tongue or proboscis uh, but few people have ever seen. Look how long that thing is. That's just crazy. Here's a, here's a link to my website, guys, keysmoths.com. Here's the Rustic Sphinx page. And look at that crazy cool caterpillar. I love the crazy cool caterpillar. And uh, look at the camouflage of this moth. If it sits on the right bark of, a right, of the, the right tree, you're not gonna see that thing because it's gonna disappear. Um, super camouflage, right? We have found this species on Key Largo and on Big Pine Key in the Florida Keys. And it's typically a fall thing. So we found it in September, October, and November in the Florida Keys. Host plants, we don't know what they're feeding on in the Florida Keys, but in they're eating lantana. Well, I guess there is a lantana down there, a native one. Eh, maybe that's what they're eating. Um, not confirmed. But they, they eat lantana, 
and American Beauty Berry, which is pretty cool. So we have found them in our backyard, the caterpillars, on our sweet almond bush. And so that was a pretty cool thing to see caterpillars, multiple caterpillars on our sweet almond bush. I think it is in the uh, Beauty Berry family, I believe it's in the same family. I have to check on that. Uh, but caterpillars like that, and we've also seen them many times on Angel's Trumpet. So that big, beautiful angel's trumpet flower, all the mandukas seem, seem to eat that. It's in the Solanaceae family. And we found rustic sphinx several times on that. If you wanna know more about moths and butterflies of the Southern United States, and maybe you, you wanna join a community of people that study the butterflies and moths of South Florida, or Florida and the, the Southern United States, I'm gonna suggest joining the Southern Lepidoptera Society. It's a group of a couple hundred guys and gals that study uh, butterflies and moths. And I think it's a really cool organization. I've been a member for like 20 years now and I love it. So I, I strongly recommend that. The link to their website is in my description. If you haven't joined the Southern Lepidoptera Society, uh, it's about 35 bucks for an annual membership and you get newsletters and you know, you get invited to meetings and field trips and that kind of stuff. So we're going to encourage you to get into a butterfly moth community and uh, learn more about these amazing creatures. All right. So before we leave the topic of the rustic sphinx, I wanted to just show you the caterpillar real quick because this, this is actually just a shot from my website. Uh, this is the caterpillar. They look very similar to the other Manduka caterpillars. However, they've got this really cool purple hue on those diagonal streaks on the body. And those diagonal streaks, I believe, are passages where oxygen travels from the sphericals and oxygenates the body. And they're just highlighted here. But one of the big differences between this caterpillar and the and Manduka sexta, the, the tobacco or even the tomato hornworm, is the horn on the back. So the horn, which all the Mandukas have, the, the horn on the rustic sphinx has all these little nodules on it. I, I don't know if you can really see it on this video, but the, the rustic sphinx has that noduled, like bumpy horn, whereas the Manduka sexta does not. It's just a, a smooth horn, which looks kind of sharp. It's really not that sharp, uh, but it sure is intimidating looking. Uh, this is actually, chowing down on our sweet almond uh, leaves from our sweet almond bush, right? And then finally, of course, the the pupa of the, the rustic sphinx has that very classic Manduka big old proboscis chamber, which is so cool. I, every time I see this thing, it just reminds me of like some kind of, uh, you know, Egyptian mummy uh, tomb or something like that. that where I, I think they actually made tombs that mimicked sphinx moth pupa. So uh, guys, this is a crazy pupa, great life cycle. It's a great bug to raise. Uh, love the rustic sphinx. Oh yeah, well, <laughs> rustic sphinx guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, this big, long proboscis is something else. And I, yeah, <laughs> uh, so cool. But guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and give me a thumbs up if you like the video because Rustic Sphinx is a cool bug and we've got tons more where this comes from. So you don't wanna miss out on the action. If you subscribe, hit the bell for notifications and whenever we put out cool videos on moths like the Rustic Sphinx, you'll get notified and you'll be able to stay up with all that's going on in the world of Keys Moths. So guys, thanks for joining us. Stay tuned next time. Uh, let's get out there and enjoy South Florida. Take care.